and welcome to this episode of MyPCHelp.com. Today we have with us David Murray, who's an expert on spyware. So David, how did you come to know so much about spyware? <laughs> well, um, for, the, for 10 years I worked as a computer repair technician, and for the last year I worked uh, in the IT department of a major computer corporation. And so there's been a lot of spyware issues we've had to deal with. So what percentage of those calls are related to spyware? Um, believe it or not, um, about 80 to 90 percent of the calls that I get are related to spyware. So I guess for you, spyware is good for your business then. Yeah, well, it may generate a lot of business, but spyware is actually one of the more difficult things to solve. It's, uh, it's, uh, it, it's quite a bit more time consuming than, um, than working on defective hardware like we used to do in the olden days. Really? You mean harder than changing out a CD-ROM or a power supply? Oh yeah, changing out a power supply or a CD-ROM, I can do that in, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes maybe. But spyware, it's usually just not one piece. There's, there's usually dozens or, or hundreds of pieces on a person's computer and it can take me hours or sometimes several days to try to clean it out. So normally, what does this procedure end up costing one of your customers? Um, well, it really depends on um, how much of it's actually on the computer but uh, typically somewhere between fifty and a hundred dollars. So spyware could end up costing someone just as much as if their computer had broke down. Yeah, in fact, um, I think spyware right now is, is the number one cost to consumers and businesses um, versus you know hardware repairs and, and that kind of thing. So you have a video you want to show us, right? Yeah, this first video that I want to show you is, uh, it basically just explains the different types of spyware because I think a lot of people don't realize how many different kinds are out there and all the different things that they do. So uh, I think this will be really informative to, uh, to help people figure out what, you know, what, what's out there. The internet has changed society forever. People can now share ideas and information in ways never before thought possible. Unfortunately, a few unscrupulous people are always the ones to spoil it for all of the rest of us. Every kind of fraud imaginable can be found on the internet. There are deceptive advertising, money scams, phishing schemes, viruses, spam, identity theft, child predators, and of course spyware. Every one of those categories could have a documentary all to its own, but this time we're going to talk about spyware. How do you get it? How do you avoid getting it? And if you do get it, how do you get rid of it? So how do you know if your computer has spyware on it? Well, believe it or not, according to current statistics, as many as 86% of all personal and corporate computers have some form of spyware. Now most of the time it goes unnoticed. It's not until the user has a few dozen or a few hundred that the computer quits working properly and then usually a call to tech support or a visit to the computer store is in order to fix it. How can you tell if you're one of the ones with the spyware? Well, I'm going to give you a few tips you can look for. One of the most common types of spyware that you can get on your computer and also the most annoying is technically called adware. You can't actually see the adware program, but you can see its effects. Generally, that involves lots of pop-up advertising. Sometimes the pop-ups just come out of nowhere while you're sitting at your desktop. Other times, different types of spyware will try to make it appear as if the pop-ups are actually coming from websites that you visit. Adware can be so annoying that sometimes it by itself is reason enough for many of my customers to have brought computers to me for repair. Another common type of spyware that we see are in the form of toolbars and search bars. Now directly from the factory, your Microsoft Internet Explorer should look something like this. But if you have another bar underneath your URL bar, there's a good chance it's spyware. 
Now, not all toolbars are spyware. For example, Google and Yahoo, they both have their own form of toolbar. But they're not a problem because you can simply remove them if you decide you don't like them. Your spyware toolbars are either difficult or darn near impossible to uninstall. If you're not sure if your toolbar is spyware, here's a good way to find out. Go up to your URL bar and type in a website that you know for sure does not exist and see where it takes you. If you get this page, that's what you should get. You should just get an error that the page was not found. Or you might possibly get an error from uh, MSN, depending upon how your DNS is configured. But if it takes you to a search page with advertising on it, then you know that's being caused by a toolbar. Just as an example of how bad toolbars can get if you get too many of them, this is an amusing photo I found on the internet of one user's desktop which had so many toolbars installed that there was only a small section down at the bottom of the screen that they could actually use for browsing the web. One of the most dangerous types of spyware you can have on your computer is an information logger. Now, information loggers are hard to see because you don't see the effects of them. They don't steal your home page or send you any pop-up advertising. But what they do is they sit in your computer and monitor your activities. This is where the original term spyware came from. They're like a spy. They watch what you're doing and report it back to somebody else. The reason that they're the most dangerous is because people don't realize they're on their computer. And they can be taking your bank account numbers, your credit card numbers, your passwords to various websites like your bank or your credit card companies. And that's very dangerous information for someone to have. A lot of identity theft spews from this type of spyware. I'm sure if you've used the internet, you're familiar with the term spam. Now, we're not talking about the packaged meat product from Hormel. No, we're talking about the kind you get in your email inbox. Yes, the kind trying to constantly sell you Viagra and penis enlargers and gambling schemes and make a million dollars overnight schemes. Some people are angry with their internet provider that they don't block more spam. Unfortunately, spam has gotten more and more difficult to block over the years because of spam bots. So what's a spam bot? Is it spyware? Is it a virus? Is it a Trojan? It's difficult to really classify it. Just to give you some background, in the past, when spammers wanted to send you spam, they would simply use their own email server, load it up with a list of addresses, send it, that information goes to the internet, goes to your internet provider's email server, and then eventually to your inbox. Well, internet providers found that it was fairly easy to block that kind of spam because they could find out which servers were sending the spam and simply not allow information from those mail servers anymore. Problem solved. Well, unfortunately, in the days of spam bots, it's a little bit more difficult than that because now you have thousands or potentially millions of computers infected with spam bots. The bot master can sit at his house, come up with a piece of spam, send it out to all of his infected computers, and those computers will send out that email to all of the other computers, including ones that are or are not infected with the program. That makes it very difficult for internet providers to block the spam because it comes from so many different locations. So, if you have a spam bot on your computer, that means not only are you going to receive more spam, very likely, but you're also sending spam to other people and you don't even know it. Not all types of spyware can be easily classified into the categories we've just described. Some pieces of spyware do more than one thing, a combination of different things that we've described. Some of them do things we haven't described yet. For example, some of them steal your home page, resetting it to some advertising page every time you restart your browser. Some of them will provide you with system warnings, extorting you, telling you that there's something wrong with your computer and that if you buy their product, it will make it all better. Some of them just cause all kinds of problems and we can't even explain what they were meant to do. We need to discuss exactly what does and does not constitute technically being spyware. We're going to use the word spyware a lot in this video, but not all of these programs are technically considered spyware. In fact, we really should be using the word malware, or some people call it malware. And that's basically just an umbrella term which describes a whole variety of different undesirable software, things that you don't want on your computer. That could even include viruses. So why would anybody even make such a horrible program in the first place? Unfortunately, the answer almost always boils down to one thing 
money. They give programs to you which hurt you but make them money. They either make money by providing you and a million other people with unwanted advertising or they make money by selling your personal information that they stole from your computer to other advertising agencies who will make money by sending you spam or telemarket you or sending you junk mail. Um, sometimes it's just downright stealing like taking your credit card numbers or your bank account passwords. Um, another thing is they could make money by sending out spam if they're using your computer as a portal for sending out spam. Wow, I had no idea there were so many different types. I might even have some on my computer. People don't really fall for those advertisements about winning free things, do they? <laughs> Believe it or not, they do. In fact, I just got a call a few days ago uh, from this guy and, and he called me up, uh, you know, in the IT department. He says, yeah, yeah, my, uh, my desktop, it's got a, uh, uh, a message that says I've won a free laptop computer. So, uh, you know, I'm talking on the phone here to him. I'm like, oh, uh, you, you need some help with that? And he's like, yeah, yeah. So I go ahead and I go on down to the desk because a lot of times it's easier to work on something when, when I can see it than, than when right in front of me. And, um, and, and I got to his desk and, and there it was. It was one of those regular pop-up banners that says, you know, congratulations, you've won a free laptop. You know, click here to claim your prize or whatever. And... Um, and when I saw that it was just a web browser pop-up, I'm like, oh, yeah, we can just close that. It's not a big deal. You know, see, in my mind, I was thinking it was something that was stuck on a screen that he didn't know how to get rid of. But uh, it turned out that he really thought he'd want a free laptop, and he wanted to know how to claim it. That's why he called me, is he wanted to know. In fact, he was afraid that the company that we worked for was going to take the laptop since it was a company computer he had won it on, you know. <laughs> and so, so yeah, he, he really believed he was going to get himself a free laptop. I think there's a question that we all may have. Um, what's the difference between a virus and spyware? That is a good question. Um, they are very similar and they can both cause a lot of trouble. But uh, technically, uh, viruses are illegal, but spyware, for the most part, is not. Now, um, there's a difference in the way that you get them. For example, viruses replicate from one computer to the next. Um, so, you know, my computer could be infected with a virus and I could put something on a floppy disk. And if I gave you that floppy disk, you might catch the virus. Well, spyware doesn't work that way. Uh, spyware is typically comes from a central source um, or multiple central sources, but it doesn't go from one user's computer to another. Um, so, you know, you can only get spyware typically from either installing something on your computer or visiting a particular website that asks you to install some kind of plugin or something, but it doesn't actually replicate from one computer to another. And that's the main difference. Stick around for our next episode where David will teach us how to avoid getting spyware.